Hey, I'm the Kathleen Gamer, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020. It's Women's Tour. It's episode 25. We're on a sponsor objective. It's Chambry. We get our first real look at the new sprint team for the year in this race. I don't think we've featured them at all yet. So Del Sarto is the new acquisition who is quite strong compared to what we are used to having. She's a 6970. Plus threes to that today on the plus four overall. Uh, Bravich also joining us, a 66-68 on the natural part. 68-70 on the day. Those two are going to be significantly stronger than what we had. Clevenger was our strongest at a 67-67, but she's only recently leveled up to that. She was not a 67-67 a season ago. She was not far from it, but she, that's not where she was. Same with Klaus, who only recently built up to that. Tioli is here uh, more as a lead-out rider and as our French uh, part to this race where she's going to be uh, favored. She'll be happy to be here, so that's the main reason why she's here. But with a 73 flat rating and actually not that bad of a sprinter, a pretty good resistance, a 70 overall. Tioli is one of our top riders at the moment, third best, but really more of a bare door than anything. But on paper compared to others she's okay she's a little bit punchy she's a little bit of a sprinter definitely a quality lead out rider so yeah she'll come in handy the 56 cobble leaves a bit to be desired because looking at the stamina flat resistance that's where she would be the best for us but without the cobble rating she'll have to kind of fit the, the role of leader uh, lead out rider domestic style. Anyway, let's go ahead and set this up. Del Sarto, obviously, and Bravich, uh, both on Fitness Peaks right now, plus twos, so that was, for the most part, expected, and we're actually a minus one compared to the expected for the day, so really kind of right where we should be anyway. Klaus to protect Clevenger, and then uh, Maninti, another new face. So Maninti, we got a lot of new faces. In fact, we have four new riders in the squad today. And that's a good time to kind of feature what we have. Not much climbing to do on this one. In fact, this is probably the biggest, longest climb of the day. And then once you go over that bridge, you're good to go. And we've got to hit that one one more time later on. But uh, ultimately, this should come down to a sprint. Just a one-day classic, so we are not going beyond uh, today on this one. Five riders off the back who, at the moment, are looking like they might not regain contact. Temporary split, I would imagine that's going to come back together. It does, but the gap to those five has gotten bigger. And the pace is doing some damage in the field here. We're going to speed up a little bit, just a little. We want to hold position. We don't want to drift back especially the way this thing's splitting. It's a short race. We're already down to 55K. Uh, I'd like to go get water, but I'm not sure. I think we can kind of hold out without today, but you know, let's, let's risk it. It's a nice long flat section here. Manenti, water, one and only time for the day. The hardest bit of climbing due to the pace. I mean, we've already done it, but due to the pace is coming up in the not too distant future. We're gonna have to up this a little more. We'll say 79. There's the breakaway group, less than a minute ahead now. Okay, there's the first bit to it. The harder bit is the next one. Pull up a little harder here, 81. Especially when we don't have climbers, we don't wanna get dropped here. We do see a split. Clevenger and Klaus have missed that split. It's back together. Okay. They will recover. Maybe. Another split again. Okay. Del Sarto. Going backwards. Not okay. There's nobody out in front, so with less than 20 kilometers to go, now it's beginning split, to look as though it's going to end in a mass sprint. It's looking like two or three of these groups could, should come back together. This group's definitely in, at risk. This group's got a lot of firepower and very, very close to the front still. There we go, back together there. 
But it is worrying that we are struggling as much. Bravich hanging on a little bit better. That race day condition. She's a little better climber. Del Sarto is only a 57 in the mountain. So, yeah, that's that's a problem we got to deal with with this group. The finish line is getting close. Their riders have just passed the 15 kilometers road sign. Speed up here. Try to make your way through this if this group's going to make it back. It's by linking up with these riders the ahead. Bunch. Her group reached contact with another group. Oh, Del Sarto just got dropped. Dang. Now we're down to just Bravich at the front and 30 riders, and the gap is actually getting quite big. We're going to have to uh, sprint train this thing, try to bring it back. But Bravich, meanwhile, we need a top 10 for this one. There's very few races where that is our option. And those 30 riders at the Ten front. Kilometers remaining. It's going to be hard to regain contact with them. Okay. Clevenger, totally not happened. Let's set up this group. We will try. Uh, Tioli, go ahead and 10k. Just pursue be hard to get a top 10 alone for Bravich. While the pack is getting close to the finish line, everybody seems to agree that the stage will be won in a They are sprint. sitting up a little bit. This is going to give us a chance to come back. Gap is coming down. Not the only ones chasing here. This is pretty much the last little uphill and we're back in contact. 54 riders now at the front. The work is not done. Tioli still needs to come forward. Clevenger did not make it back. Tioli is only going to bring us up Five to where to the line. Bravich is. So then we're going to have a two rider. There you go. 4K to go. Bravich, go ahead and get in line. Tioli, just enough to lead us out a little bit longer. Now on to Bravich. Last incline. 2.4k. Now we put foot down, accelerate out of this thing. 1.8. Bravich to lead out Del Sarto. Oh my, the guys up front aren't going to be and Del Sarto for the sprint. Top 10 secure. Will she get a win in our first race? She, she does. Lena Del Sarto. Nice run in. in that the was pace because, like what we've gotten used to with this team. We were not in the prime position. She won that thing on merit. She had some energy left, just a little bit, so that was pretty good. She could have only gone a few meters earlier. Bravich gave her an excellent lead out, which, well, we're not used to that either, are we? We're not used to being near the front. We're usually well behind already as we're getting started. As we're getting down to that last two and a half kilometers or so, we're already sixth seventh wheel instead of at the front where i like to be this time bravich kept us pretty much at the front gave us a good start by time del sarto started her sprint there was two or three riders ahead of her she beat them to the line are you kidding me we beat somebody to the line properly on merit oh yeah not just the top 10 not just a top five not just a podium but a victory that's going to go down very very well with the sponsor we move on to our next sponsor objective a whole team is tucked in behind so they've got some work to do to get to the front it's only 85 kilometers in length this time we need to get top five but it's another sprint finish and after that last race pretty confident we can get a decent result at least but there's a big difference between uh, top five and getting the win as Erica Clevenger has somehow found herself into the breakaway. Um, I'll, I'll ride with them. Okay, it's back to together. The I wouldn't There's a few riders uh, commit to anything, for position at the front. Tioli on a minus two, Clevenger on a minus three, so that's not good. The, the weather's off today, so everybody's expecting a minus one from the expected race day condition. Del Sarto still manages to go positive despite that, even though, you know, Plus one was all that was expected for her. Bravich still expected a plus one, ended up with a minus one. So mixed bag, but not bad for the team on how we're looking for the day. Vanderpeet is here as the well-known representative. 
Uh, in terms of reputation now, I just had a quick look through the team. There are still mostly unknowns on the team. We are now up to four riders that at least have some amount of repute. Vanderpeet, local, rep. But Tioli, our new rider, also has local rep. So that's two pack. riders the now that have liking. a little something. We actually got a double plus speed. for having Tioli in that last race as she was somebody who was French in a French race with a little bit of reputation. So we actually got a bonus for the registered riders on that one. Here, Vanderpeet or Tioli. I don't know if either one of them is going to get anything for us. There's a breakaway. It is a Dutch race. Vanderpeet's here, local rep, so maybe she'll get that double plus. Okay, Clevenger's minus three. That takes her out of commission for the day, so let's go ahead and use her to protect Del Sarto. Uh, we'll use Vanderpeet to protect Bravich who's not going to be as strong, and it looks like Klaus is probably going to be the other go-to. Yes. All right, we've really got to watch out for how skinny the roadway is on this one. And that finish, the pack it's is not wide. Like Positioning is going to be really Some important. Some team managers mustn't late appreciate late the fact that there is Obviously a breakaway, given that, that the pack has increased its speed. On a regular basis, but that's going to help if we can get out front a little easier to stay there. It's going to be a lot harder to overtake today on the look of the profile. All right, 60k to go. Let's go ahead and use Tioli to go ahead and grab some water for us. Finishes on that straight skinny section, so no left-hander before it. The other, the left-hander, uh, the one post left-hander was the start line. I would have been happy if that was the finish line. Left-hander right before the finish. As if they would do that, that would lead to a lot of crashes. 36k to go. 12 riders in the break, but it's less than a minute. Very easy to uh, pick them up once the flip goes down and speak it of pace is starting to pick so pick up our tempo as well to make sure we stay in position 26k to go coming up on the end already coming down to it top five a little harder than a top 10 but i think we're in good shape for one today bravich Whoa, isn't going to be as good of a lead out it was nice when del sarto and bravich were both had a couple what, of teams have set plus themselves up as pacemakers it's plus they three minus don't one have anybody not in the as good group. but again the weather is affecting everybody so everybody there's still a right hander right before the finish it's still very skinny road so yeah that's actually that's good 16 to go there are a few riders in trouble at the back only yeah, 15 kilometers back a left. little bit there's a heavy push to catch that last of the break All right. Let's. It's 13k. It's a little early. However, I want to pick up when they catch those two riders. There's going to be a lift to the pace, and that's going to allow us to go forward quickly. Uh, we'll go Vanderpeet. Clevenger's minus three is not going to help her. Yeah, 60 resistance. So Clevenger. Vanderpeet's going to have a decent flat. Oh yeah, very good flat. Avenger caught That's behind the teammates. The the Come on, you're not no caught chance. anymore. You're not caught anymore. That lifting of pace didn't matter pace. because Clevenger caught behind her own teammates, couldn't get through, and it's an now with 10k to go, we're struggling to there get near the front. Left. Peloton has split, 57 left in the group, and Clevenger still struggling to get through. If we go too hard and gaps open, the teammates of the All main sprinters are not handing out tickets for dropped. a breakaway, so the there stage will end okay. up in a mass sprint. 8K to go. 8K to go, and this battle is for real. Come on, 6K to go. Jail time for everybody else. Finally, we're coming through. However, not everybody's Five made it through yet. To Tioli get, has gotten caught. Still has not gotten through. Come on, Tioli. Come on, Tioli. Come on, Tioli. 
Okay, on to Vanderpeet. 3.7 to go. Come on, Tioli. There you go. Come on, Vanderpeet. Get through this. 3k to go. I want her to sprint, and I want these others to go the with. First for the final sprint. This is going to force other teams to come out a little early. Tioli. Oh, gosh. Never got through. Klaus. Klaus sprint. Uh, it's going to have to be Tioli now. We got a left hander and a right hander coming up. Tioli, go, go, go. Oh, sorry, just the left hander. Double switch. Tioli's going to do enough for maybe second. A really powerful uh, it's going to be close. To she does hang on for victory. Tioli. Uh, for second place, Jade Tioli, second place. Van Veltsen takes the win. So lucky. I told you position was going to really, really matter here. And Clevenger getting the caught race is run, really the hurt us. That's why I tried to form to early. I formed two to three kilometers earlier than I would normally so that we could get forward. And then we couldn't get through. And we couldn't get and through. And we couldn't get through. And then finally, two riders got through. And everybody else was still caught off the back. And so the second rider through, Tioli ended up having to do the job and did it well she hung on for second place that's a really good result for not the sprinter vander B vanderpeet ends up seventh clevenger we never got this group through they never made it through second okay another actually really good result not a win but all things considered that was looking really ugly there for a moment uh we'll go ahead and quick sim this one where we're actually in a good position in the gc and we do hang on to 5th, 6th, and 10th in that race. And let's go forward today and see how we are looking now. We are approaching, uh, not a max evaluation, but a super success on the, on the year. Now, here's the thing, though. We've had three straight super successes after an almost. We had two second places needing a stage win there. Luckily, we don't have too many stage win requirements. This already, even though five major objectives come up at the end of the season, they're all after August. They're after the turn date. So really, the rest of the way, what we have is all five of our largest objectives are among the next six, including the next two being the biggest. And our next race physically on the calendar Actually, the next two races on the calendar are these two. So our biggest races of the season. This is going to go down as a failure, guaranteed. We have no cobbled riders. None. So nobody's going to do well in that race. So we're going to focus on the Tour of the Gila. Top three overall. That's tough. That's tough. Three and a half star objective. So these two could really set us back a long, long ways. Expect we're going to fail massively on this one. I will be lucky to get anybody in the top 50. That's tough because it's a top three. If it's top 10, absolutely. I think we can pull a top 10 in our current state. Vanderpeet can get top 10 at the Tour of the Gila. Can she get top three, though? Probably not, especially when there's a time trial involved. The punchy parts, yeah, we'll be okay there. But will there be separation? Much? Small group? Small group for both? Probably. So then that puts us in a bit of trouble because then it comes down to the time trial and how good are we at the time trial? Mm, not that good. Not that good. So um, let's go ahead and confirm how good, how bad is it? Well, 74 Mountain, great. Time trial, 73, 74, right? It's not that bad. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. It's going to be enough. Uh, she's our only time trialist right now it, with any amount. Donadin's pretty good, pretty punchy, but 67, 63. Uh, it's almost 100% time trial, 24K. 25K is where you get 100% time trial, so 67 is what she'll have. Uh, Donadin did recently level up, by the way. 73 now instead of a 72 so make us a progress but I, I think we're kind of looking now at 
a couple of these writers in the mid 60s Menenti uh, as the best example is high potential and will develop and become something but we're now at a point where pretty much from about Marie down are quickly becoming rather useless for us uh, well below our top writers well below the level they need to be at and most of them lack much potential uh, I don't have enough time to do any more races for this episode so I'm going to do a quick check in on the riders I did tell you that there was four with reputation you see Vanderpeet with that local rep 75 climber but she's very much a stage racer now and that's what we've been training her as and while her potential is 3.6 the rate at which she has progressed suggests two things one she was very early in her leveling up progress and two she's got to be closer uh, to a five or a six bravich new rider on the team sprinter is her main role she's not bad as a time trialist 62 cobble is better than what we have for some and she's got very high potential but she's already 25 so guaranteed she's quite a few levels into those level ups and as mostly a barador the potential is great but her levels are going to be a little ways in between Brookshire, unknown, but a 68, not bad. Low potential, but compared to some of our other riders, her, her 65 mountain and the 72 downhill can definitely come in handy at times. Erica Klaus, okay lead out sprinter, low potential though, not going anywhere. We're going to let go of her before too long, especially already 22, been with the team since the start. Clevenger, step in the right direction however also issues with age just one year deal or signed her last year two year deal whatever it was low potential already 27 just 67s across the board but for us that's still about third best where she's often in the mix here's del sarto this is one of our hopefuls because the potentials not perfect it's good but five six is good potential just 19 at just 19 we know that there's quite a few levels still ahead of her del sarto 69 70 on that sprint this is our main sprinter for a while she will be our main sprinter for a while so uh, hopefully we can sign better than this but also hopefully she's going to develop into the low 70s maybe mid 70s eventually and we'll probably keep her around on the team especially with the age uh, for quite a few years and it's hard to find high potential riders in this database compared to what you normally see in the men's database you want to do it done we brought her in because of the potential but three six and just a 63 overall still sign up for next season though unfortunately Okay, here's Donadin, district reputation, 5'8 potential, plenty to do. She's expiring on the contract. It was only a two-year deal, though, so uh, we got to re-sign her this year. That's going to be hard. We have the money. It shouldn't be that hard to get the interest to keep her because she's on the team. She might not have it, but it should be able to grow and develop to keep her around. Mamalenti growing pretty well as a puncher 69 overall potential it's tolerable but she's not going to level up a whole lot when she's already 21 and mediocre potential but we know she's not going to be near her limit yet so there's still levels to go it's just how long is it going to take her to go level to level Manenti, that's our high potential low current ability but very young should level up quickly for now and then once that slows down we'll see how high she is marie moderate potential but already 25 
Maxwell, moderate potential, but already 24. Miucci, moderate potential, 22, but only a 64 overall. Can climb a bit, though, so she will be handy for the next couple of seasons. Summer Moak was a 61 when we first signed her, but she's low potential. I definitely don't see her as a 1 or a 2 because she's picked up 5 levels since the start of this. So she's probably a 4 on potential, which has seen some progress. But at 22, how much more progress does she have left? Probably not a lot, and only a 64-62. So this is her final contract. We will not re-sign her. Passerini, high potential, only 20, but only a 64 overall. Sobi, 69 overall, local rep. So I think that's actually already come up. That's three now that have local rep. High potential, already a 71 mountain, will be a climber. 69 resistance also very handy not great but with that potential at that age should develop pretty well for us schmid even with the potential no chance of sticking around she came from the 50s into a 62 but uh, she's way too far off the, the pace to be useful sheer also this is it for her expiring this year and then back to uh teoli here who is our other one on local rep a 70 overall high potential but very much a barador so can we reshape her and where to for now she's training as a puncher 64 mountain 68 acceleration main reason for that and we don't really have much of a puncher so already we've actually taken that up to three riders with local rep and one with just the uh, district rep we got a long ways to go. We have such a long ways to go in this playthrough. However, we had 270 we had a 73, a 72 and a 70 with the signing of Tioli. So we were just uh what a 71 average. Already we've pushed that to a 73 average. Since the start of the season, Vanderpeet picking up two levels. Donadin picking up a level. Teoli's probably not that far off from picking up a level. Sobi or Mamalenti could also jump to about a 71. Uh, Del Sarto has plenty of progress and is young. Bravich, Brookshire not likely. Bravich already 25, but Del Sarto anyway. So there's a good six riders at the top who are going to continue to develop this season. So I really, really like our chances of hitting Continental Pro for next season, and especially how close we were this season, and we've already progressed. Big thing, obviously, is to get Donadin re-signed. Vanderpeet's still ooh, both expiring. Okay, it's going to be expensive to get them, but we have the money for it, so it's okay. We should be able to get them re-signed, and they will remain the core of this team. We'll see how quickly Tioli so we can level up and be that third one, and then we'll see what we can get signed. But in terms of the overall team reputation and the fact that we're a continental team, I'm guessing it's still going to be hard to sign too many quality riders outside of our own ranks. We're going to have to mostly develop in-house. But as we push up to Continental Pro, next season, maybe next season we can sign better. But we'll see. Maybe we've done enough because we did go from zero stars to one star to, are we at two and a half? Two stars? I don't know. It's it's not that high yet, is it? One and a half? I don't know. It's gone up, though. It's definitely gone up, and it will go up next season. And hopefully that means the dossier period when that comes along, we can sign some better writers. All right. Well, now I'm just rambling, aren't I? No more tangents. So let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time as we take on the Tour of Aguila. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.